Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is the Double Exposure Effect. Thanks once again to Jose Campos for making this request um, and I put it together just because he asked. So if you've got something that you're interested in, make sure you let me know. So the idea behind this, now first of all, I've seen tons of tutorials out there in both Photoshop and After Effects, the two go-to places for compositing. But a lot of editors want to work uh, quickly and simply and they know Premiere Pro. The good thing is all you need are track mats to do this. There's, there's uh, nothing else. Now I took mine a step uh, further and I did use uh, masks for some of them, but for the basic technique, you don't need to. Let's go have a look. So let's grab um, this image here and I'll make a, uh, a new sequence. And let's just cut the duration of this to that. Okay, so we start with a green screen video and I shot all of this green screen, basically had Haley and uh, Adam come and join me and we sat there all day, well, for a few hours anyway, and trying all these different poses and different shots to get it done. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of my audio at the bottom, I don't need that. So here is the first thing we need to do. Right now, typically she's on uh, video one. I'm gonna move the main image to video two. And that's because once I cut the green screen out, if we don't have anything behind it, it's going to be black. And if that's what you're looking for, great. But I actually slip another image underneath it. And I found that while I was composing the look of all of these, it made more sense because of blending modes to put in a different background right away. If you're working with black, don't worry about it. I'm not, so I'm gonna put something in there. There we go. So this is just a still image background graphic um, of that slate color. So inside our effects, we need to choose the ultra key, grab the eyedropper, click on the green, and I'm gonna turn my settings to aggressive. And now we have her transparent. And if we turn off the background, that's what I mean by being black. Now you'll notice that she is incredibly dark, that's because I, I shot everything uh, fairly dark to be able to get uh, the, the, uh, the color from the green screen. I had to stop the lens down quite a bit, but that's not important. So you have to have some level of transparency for this uh, to work with a track mat, because the track mat's gonna also use the same transparency. I used a green screen because I didn't want to keyframe this. When Jose first asked me uh, about this effect and I looked into how I was gonna do it, I knew I needed transparency. So quite frankly, I took a, another shot of Haley that I had before and I started drawing a mask in around and I thought, Man, this is a nightmare. It's actually easier to go set up a shoot for the for the day to actually shoot a bunch of green screen than to hand mask all of these shots. So you have to have transparency. If you can get away with this without green screen, if you plan, okay? So if the person that's going to be in the foreground has dark hair, darker skin, and darker clothes, 
put them over a lighter background and you'll be able to not really uh, key them out uh, like green screen, but you'll use their luminosity, simply meaning that the light stuff in the background is going to be gone and the dark stuff in the foreground will be there. But if they have light colored skin, dark hair, dark clothes, the face will be gone too. So you have to make uh, a choice of the background and the foreground being different. If they were ve wearing light clothes, very light skin, very fair hair, then they can stick them in front of a dark background. Maybe you can fake it that way and, and fudge it. Remember, this is a very stylized looking effect. So nobody's looking for absolute perfect edges. I just want to give you some options so that you don't think, well, I don't have a green screen, I'm screwed. Maybe you can play with some high contrast images. Okay, so we are going to find an image that we want to put in the middle. And I made a whole bunch of these and I called them inside videos. So let's use something, um, let's use this one. So I'll stick that on the next layer. So that's on the, the second layer. So let's go through this again. Bottom layer is my background. Second layer is the transparent person. And then we have our middle image. Now we need to take this image, which is the green screen, and put it up above. So I'll hold the Alt key on Windows, Option on Mac, and drag this all the way, and it will make a new layer for you, or a new track. So now we have a duplicate. If we turn everything off and we look at the top, that's a duplicate. V4 is a duplicate of what's on V2, and sandwiched in the middle of that is what we're going to have in the middle. So let's turn on both of these. I'll select the building, go to my effects, and apply the track mat. Now in the effects controls, we need to tell what, um, where is our mat? So we added the mat to V4, so we'll choose video four and just like that. Okay, so far so good. Track mat is simply taking uh, in our case, the alpha, the transparency of Haley is in the middle. She's not transparent there. The green screen cut her out, and that is transparent. So the default is to use the alpha mat. But if you wanted to, you could use a luma mat. And the luma mat, you can see, doesn't work for, for ours here. But this could be where you're using the, um, uh, the person that, that's very contrasty between the foreground and between the background. It's just a lot easier if you're using um, green screen. Okay, so let's turn on the bottom and the bottom. So right now what we're seeing is the transparency is going all the way to the background and the middle is hiding the person uh, on V2. As soon as you use the track matte effect for this top layer, then the top layer disappears. That might be a little confusing at first. You're using it as a way to mask out the area, and as soon as the track mat is pointed to that layer, it automatically turns it off. It's just a smart thing for the effect to do. So how do we blend all of this stuff together? Because that's really the cool part. Well, if you select the building layer, and we go to our opacity settings and twirl these down, you'll notice blend modes and you'll notice transparency. So if you do something as simple as turn the transparency of the building down, then you begin to see the her below it. So to make this easier, let's turn off everything and let's just brighten up uh, Haley here. So at the top, go to my color settings and that um, automatically added the Lumetri effect and we'll just turn up the exposure. Okay, let's go back to editing. You'll notice what's important over here for, for the uh, double exposure, uh, the original on the bottom. There's our ultra key and the Luma, sorry, the Luma tree color that we just did is below it. If you add any kind of color correction before the green screen, it's gonna screw up how the green screen is made. So just make it after. So we take the image, we cut out the background and then we lighten her up. Now let's go back to turning on the other layers. So if we go back to the building layer and just start turning the transparency down, you can see that we can mess with that transparency part way. And now she's there and the building is there.
okay? We can also leave that all the way up and try different blend modes. And what I find useful is I use my scroll wheel right here and scroll down between all of those. And you start to see some are going to work a little bit better than others. Linear Dodge Add seems to work really well. And if we turn that transparency down again, we can get some cool effects. There's Overlay and Overlay Turned Down. Now the only other thing I'm going to show you is that notice how the building is over there on the right. If you wanted to move the building, select the building in the motion, and we change the coordinates, you'll notice what happens is the alpha mat moves with it. So that's okay, that's expected. You can drag that building over there. You need to select the mat, which is the one on the top, and you need to drag it back to where it was. So now we get the building more in her face, if that makes sense. Here's the only other thing to, to uh, and I can see it happening right here. Here's the, the only thing to be concerned about. This is a default setting that I can't turn off inside Premiere Pro. Every change you make in the effects control panel does not have a keyframe by default. You have to manually go out of the way to add a keyframe, except for opacity. Remember I was changing opacity over here? Look at this, I've got keyframes. So now it's actually changing because I was noodling around on those. And you'll notice the blue keyframe or blue stopwatch, click on there, get rid of them. Now I can freely make changes to that transparency and not have it do that kind of an effect. So there we go, there's a building stuck inside, transparent that comes up and we could you know, change the transparency over time and expose more of her and do things like that. So now let's go look at what I did. I'll break this stuff down so we can see what's happening. This is, I'm gonna open up the middle, I'll, I'll call this middle video because that's the sandwiched midi, middle video. This is a time lapse of clouds. And they just happen to be right around her, her eye uh, right there. And the settings for this, this was color dodge. So you can see the transparency is color dodge to this one below. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm using here, when I transition between these, these flares and things are all rampant design tools, baby. And if you haven't looked at my rampant design, I'll put it up here. Go watch it. Have a look. They've got some free things for you to download, all 4K, 6K. And I drop these in to help cool, create these cool transitions between there. And, and you add blend modes in there and off they go. So here's another one. And if we open up the graphic, the, the graphic quality of this inside video is actually not very good it, it it's believe it or not it's a uh, it's a time lapse of a big ice storm i had in the backyard and i stuck my camera in the window so it's very jerky but i love this natural lens flare so you can see the lens flare working out and I love the way that it, it hid most of the top of her face, that it was just the trees, but you can see because of the mat on the, you know what it is, the mat is showing you that it is a hat. And for that one, that's a screen blend mode that I'm using on that. And I don't think I'm using any blend modes on the, the rest of that stuff. And some of the, the flares that you see going on up there, that that's more, uh, rampant design. Now you can see with this one, I've actually keyed her all the way out and then I've increased the size. Okay, so if we look at this one, there are opacity keyframes. So I keyframed from being able to see her and you'll see that this is set to hard light and it starts at around 50% and goes all the way up to 100%. So it basically, the middle video hides her completely okay now this is a different one where i used a mask so i didn't have to use a mask but this mask is hiding half of his face so if you remove it completely you'll see the track mat from the top layer 
um, and he's on the bottom layer. The fire is in between. And that just added another dimension to this so that half of his face is hidden while we've got that fire blended in there. And that fire blend mode is set to soft light to look that way. And again, a different kind of background. Uh, thanks to the folks at JCM Digital Imaging for this great clip of high frame rate burning fire that we're using. And I'll put a link down there so you can go and have a look at what they have to offer. Go back over to the next one, another flash. This one also has some animation in it. So this one is actually changing the transparency of the background too. So you can see the background disappears to black or almost to black to 15%. And you can see what that does. It, it really highlights this area in here. And I loved the way that the trees were moving up and through um, Adam's body. Now the next one, I, I really added a lot of things in here, but I also wanted to show you adding something outside of the area. So everything we've shown you up to this point has been a person and everything inside the person. That's cool, everything's there, but then on top of that, I duplicated the middle video, stuck the middle video on top, just so I could see some of those branches coming in over the top area. So that's this layer here which is the exact same as the middle uh, layer. It's just dropped up in the top and has a, a different uh, darkened blend mode in it. This one is also unique because for this one, I added a mask on his face. So I just grabbed the mask tool and cut his face out so it looks like you're just seeing his head in there. Let me just make that bigger. I thought that was a pretty cool effect. And then I just changed the scale of both him. So I had to change the scale of the bottom of him and I had to change the scale of the track mat above. And you can see there's my keyframes there and there. And for the top, there and there. Okay, and then we flash into the last one. And for this one, I stuck in uh, a woman looking off into the distance. He's turning around and a letter to her right in there. And then we finish off with a very nice thank you to our wonderful subjects, Haley and Adam. All right, Jose, hopefully this gives you a, a lot to go by. Uh, this is a very fun effect. I have to admit this took an enormous amount of work for me to experiment with a lot of things. Like I said at the beginning, this is normally done with After Effects and with Premiere Pro. I'm mean, sorry, After Effects or Photoshop, of course not video in Photoshop stills, where you've got more control over those elements. In After Effects, um, if you look at the opening to True Detective, I guarantee you it was done in After Effects because there's a lot of intercompositing going on uh, and blending between things beyond what we're doing in here. But as I showed you when I, I just grabbed the one quick clip of Haley and threw the building in between, track mat on top of it, boom. If you got green screen, it's gonna go a lot easier. But if you got high contrast uh, uh, graphics that or, or Im video of, of people, then it might work. All right, whew. Hopefully you found this informative. Um, if you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to take your support up another level, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And thanks so much to everyone who's doing such great things to support us. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.